Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zaid here with another episode of Zaid's Experience. Today, I'm gonna be taking you through my kitchen and what I've been cooking up or what I've been doing with myself as of very lately. Uh, I've been checking out a couple of things and it's gonna include a lot of fermented food, so stick around, guys, and check this out. So before we start off, I wanted to give you guys a quick little update as to how my progress has been going with the whole fasting and, and all that shenanigans. Um, so fasting has been going great. I've been gaining quite a bit of muscle though. I've been doing the OMAD, I've been doing the one meal a day and that's been resulting in actually a substantial amount of muscle being gained and in no way was I expecting to gain as much muscle as I am with the amount of work that I'm actually doing. So I've been pretty happy with that. And I'm gonna show you guys right now. So as you guys can see, it, it is quite substantial. Um, some of you guys might say that I got a little bit chubby or, or something like that, but in in reality, there's a lot of muscle that has been gained, a lot of strength has been coming back. And don't get me wrong, I definitely feel the use of, of me not using carbs um, in comparison to before. And I definitely, definitely feel it when I don't use them. So that's something I've definitely noticed. But I've also noticed that um, I have legs again. There's a lot less hurt in a lot of areas, so it's a compensation of whatever your goal is. My goal right now isn't to get huge, isn't to um, put on a bunch of muscle, so eating carbs is not primordial to me right now. But as I've told you guys before, and I've alluded in many of my videos, that for me, um, carnivore is something that definitely works for me, but if I need to switch it up because we find something better or, if, or I find something better that works for me, or if I have to tweak it a little bit in any way, I will. I will go ahead and do it. There's This is not a religion, this is not dogma, this is not gospel. It doesn't have to be the end all be all. I really do believe that if you need to tweak something to make things better, to help you whether you're looking for a better physique, whether you're looking for a prolonged life, um, mental capabilities, whatever it may be, if you have to tweak something, go ahead, do it, test it out, and if it works good, and if it don't, try out the next thing. And I'll keep on repeating that. That takes me to my next point, which is, yes, I'm still doing carnivore, guys. I, I, I still, it's still working for me quite a bit. It fills me up, it makes me feel good, and in accordance with that, I've actually added a couple of things to my diet. One of them being, I've been trying out this supplement. It's, I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything, but I've seen some good reviews about it. And it's basically beef liver caps, and they're pretty good. Um, I gave my girlfriend some of these and she reported that she's been feeling great when using these and I've taken them off for a week. I put them on for a week and then taken them off just to kind of compare and it's been substantial. Like it, it, it has been and, and it hasn't been like from one day to the next. It's been for throughout several days. I kind of feel that I don't feel the days as much go by. So it's, it's kind of nice. So I've been adding these just in case, you know, just in case I need them or something, you know, better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them. So that's one of the things that have definitely changed. And as you guys can see right here, I am still very much cooking carnivore. Actually, I'm about to eat this right now after a 24 hour fast. So I'm just letting this cook out because it has quite a bit of fat. It's, I I know a lot of people go crazy with the whole fat cotton and like saying, no, you need all that fat. Um, the more and more I've been looking into the whole how much fat you need um, to be satiated and all that really depends and really varies on the individual's genes. Uh, like I told you guys, I just sent my 23andMe test and hopefully I it comes back with some positive results as to um, whether I'm able to even digest some of these saturated fats or whether I'm predisposed to be a little bit better off with a higher fat diet or with a lower fat diet or even some plant-based stuff. It all really depends. But so far I've been feeling really good with meat, but I have noticed that when I do ingest a lot of fat in one sitting, it can get a little heavy. 
Um, not as heavy as carbohydrate, like a carbohydrate load, but it, it's, it, I feel a little sluggish. So that might be something to look out for. And the other thing that I've added into my diet and that I've noticed that works is working quite well and I thought it'd be the perfect time to test it out right now during the holidays, Thanksgiving and everything. I started to ferment a lot of food. I've had quite a bit of success in the past with fermented foods. I grew up with a couple of fermented foods such as carrots, onions, and a couple of other things. I never knew they were fermented foods. I just kind of like ate them, you know? Uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard about tejuino, but tejuino was something that, or texjuino, that's, that's the original version. And then the bastardized version became tejuino, which is like a more rapid version of it. But actually, let me move the, okay. Yeah, that was gonna burn. So yeah, tejuino was another thing that I ingested the, um, back in the days when I was really young and I didn't know any better. But it's actually a really good drink and if you guys haven't tried it, I definitely encourage you. It's one of those things to try out before you die. Um, it definitely might come as an acquired taste for some people, but what it basically is, is fermented um, corn. So not the corn, not the, the Swedish corn that you, you guys see here in the US. It's a different type of corn. You, you gotta see it, it's the kernels. It's, it gets a little bit more complicated than that. I'm, I'm terribly oversimplifying this right now. But the fermented foods that I've been adding have been quite a bit of them. Uh, I've actually been fermenting my own stuff for that matter. As I've told you guys before, the couple of things that, I, that I'm able to eat from carbs that I feel really good with are White rice. White rice is one of the things that I can definitely eat in carb land and I actually feel okay with it. I don't feel heavy, I don't feel bloated, and I don't feel that it's something that kills me. Like another food that I can definitely eat that's that's carbohydrate rich is yams. Yams are pretty good and I know my grandpa used to eat them, I know my dad used to eat them it, on both sides, so it might just run in the family, but I, it, they don't feel as heavy. I can eat an entire, like a huge yam, and that's one of the few things that I'm okay with. And in accordance with that, the only other thing that I can eat that's carbs that I feel really, really good with is bread, but not just any bread, it's sourdough bread, and it has to, has to, has to be sourdough bread with this minimal processing as possible and it can be one of that yeast fermented like sourdough breads it has to be like actual like sourdough bread the way it was done back in the old days and i started looking into all these i've been actually getting into quite a bit of the fermentation kind of thing pay for my books so as you guys can see there's been quite a bit of heavy literature going on in regards to the whole fermentation process trust me these are great books and i highly recommend them one of them it's called Wild Fermentation, The Flavor, Nutrition, and Craft of Life Culture Foods um, by Sandor Elix Katz. So, really good book. Another one is, this one's a little weird, but it has some really good um, pictures and that show you how the fermented foods end up looking and like how the whole process ends up looking. So I kind of, I, I really recommend it. It has some really good stuff. It's Noma Guide to Fermentation, Rene, by Rene Redzepi and David Zilber. Even after all that reading, I can't read these. <laughs> and the one that I personally like, something that, that's really changed my life in regards to all this fermentation, um, has been The Art of Fermentation. This book is awesome, guys, um, by Sandor Elix Katz. So, it's a really, really good book. I, I, I highly recommend it if you guys want to get a little bit more into fermentation and it takes the guessing work out of fermentation and it makes you realize that this is actually safer than some of the shit we buy at the store. Just FYI, but it's it's there's some really good books. I highly recommend them. I believe all of them are on Audible if you guys don't feel like reading, but I highly recommend that you actually buy the physical books. They have some, again, it has some really good illustrations, some really good pictures that I think uh, you could definitely benefit from. And again, it'll take away that guessing work if you're ever trying to dive into fermentation. So 
with some of the stuff, like I told you guys, um, I got into bread and I really got deep, deep into bread and I started to create my own sourdough from scratch. So I started doing my own sourdough starter and I got it right here and this is actually the eighth day. And it went through a phase where it didn't smell as yeasty as it smells right now, but it's okay. You just gotta stick with the process and you just gotta go with it. And I'm gonna be trying out my first loaf of bread and I'll see how it feels in my stomach and we'll take it from there. If it's feeling okay, then I'll keep it and I'll probably eat it once a week or as a refeed of, some, of carbs of some kind. And if not, um, we'll see what we do with it. We'll, we'll give it out to somebody or someone. I'm pretty sure somebody in my family is going to like it. And somebody that can actually digest carbs a little bit better than I can. And another thing that I fermented was some raspberries that I actually these just finished fermenting. I'm going to give these a shot. I haven't. I just opened it up right now. The blueberries, uh, they're still kind of fermenting. You, you can kind of see the liquid there. Uh, I think it needs like a couple more days. And... We'll see where that where that goes. And something that I just recently tried, I've never tried sauerkraut or kimchi before. And I liked kimchi, and I know some of you guys are gonna hate me for this, but it was all right. Maybe this kimchi that I tried wasn't the best one or wasn't one that I uh, adored. And so I'm gonna be making my own kimchi and I'm gonna see how that differs from a store-bought kimchi but this was a brand that somebody recommended and it actually ended up being okay it wasn't bad it wasn't bad by any stretch but the sauerkraut I wasn't it wasn't I wasn't too hot with um, the kimchi I re I, I, I was it was okay I gave it like a seven you know my girlfriend really liked the kimchi baby you like the kimchi right what would you give it you gave it a 10 she gave it a 10 and <laughs> no taste buds there um <laughs> but we both agreed that the sauerkraut uh we haven't been able to make a dent on it um it wasn't all that great so i was a little disappointed on the sauerkraut again i'm pretty sure that there's sauerkraut enthusiasts out there that uh are probably gonna shoot me but i need to definitely make my own out of both of these versions because everything that i've made on my own that i fermented on my own tastes way better than the store-bought stuff so and again i don't want anything that's been bought on the store because it's probably been pasteurized in some way or another or somehow they've taken out the, the, the naturalness of it which is how these foods were meant to be eaten. So that, that's what I've been um, dabbling around with and I've noticed that with the sauerkraut I, I've been using it along with food and it does, it does relieve a little bit of pressure from the stomach. I do feel that it works a little bit. At first I thought it was like ah you know what it's placebo effect it's probably gonna be me just thinking or knowing the benefit but it, I tried it for several days as you guys saw like um, I've been going through it and I really really like how I feel when I'm consuming it so I'm gonna keep it in there and then I'm gonna take it away and then I'm gonna be testing it out with with more things so uh, I'm keeping it. it it doesn't seem to be affecting me and if anything it seems to be helping out with the digestion so that's good as far as a sauerkraut I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a shot and <laughs> we'll see where that goes. And the other thing that I've always had an affinity for has been pickles. Yes, guys, pickles. And I finally found a way to make my own. I've been trying these pickles that I have right here. Um, I saw that the ingredients that they had and very minimal ingredients. So that's why I chose to get them and they taste amazing. So now I am in a little bit of a position where I want to make my own so I'll be reporting back to you guys on that and it's definitely again it breaks the mundaneness having all this breaks the mundaneness of just eating meat or just eating one thing and then the final thing that I have right here and this one I'm super this one has been I think the biggest find for me in regards to this whole fermentation I mean the sauerkraut's cool the kimchi is is okay and the pickles I love and the sourdough, you know what, it, it can make me or break me kind of thing. But the one thing that I think I have found that is, has really, really worked for me, has really worked for me, has been this. This, what I got right here is kefir. I've been drinking kefir that's been store-bought uh, as of recently. 
and I've been noticing some really, really good changes, guys. I was getting, I was developing a little bit of acne as of lately because it's been the holidays and I've actually been eating some, Willie, what are you doing? No, no, that Willie. Um, my cat was trying to get into one of the cabinets. He was biting it. What the f wrong with you? Um, so back to kefir. I was trying out some different foods and with this whole fermented array of foods that I have right now, I was able to see what was helping me and what wasn't helping me digest food. And after foods, I was drinking kefir, um, the way that they, or kefir, the way that they used to actually drink it. It was supposed to be a drink. And for all of those of you guys who don't know, kefir comes from like the small kefir or kefir, kefir grains and which you use to ferment milk. And through that process of just kind of leaving them out on the counter for one day, it actually turns it into kind of this yogurt-like beverage, if you will. And as many of you guys know, uh, yogurt is really, really good. But yogurt only has six to 10 strands of bacteria on it, the, of, of lactic, like of good bacteria on it. Kefir has anywhere from 30 to 50. It's way more pun, way better. If you're somebody that's lactose intolerant, um, this is something that you can definitely drink. My girlfriend doesn't do too good with milk and she's able to drink this and she's fine with it. She won't get glasses. She won't get like, she won't start fart or doing, babe, will you start farting? You, you never fart? So never ever, that, this never happened. What about Tokyo? <laughs> but yeah, guys, um, this, this has been really a game changer. And so the kefir that they buy, that you buy at the store, it doesn't matter what brand it is. It has to be pasteurized. Through that pasteurization process, some of, or a lot of these bacteria die. And so it kind of takes away one, some of the health benefits or a lot of the health benefits from kefir, from yogurt, for whatever it may be. So what I decided to do is make my own. And whenever you make your own one, supposedly you get so much more benefits, like way more benefits. Second, you can choose the milk, obviously the quality of the milk that's being used. And third, it's way cheaper. It's way, way cheaper. The only thing you have to do is buy milk, throw in the kefir grains, which are technically not grains. They are, they're bacteria. They're kind of like a smaller version of a SCOBY. If you guys have ever done kombucha, it's just, it's like mini scobies, you could say, you know, that that's all they are. They're not legitimate grains, you know, but that's, they basically populate the milk. They consume all the sugar and they leave this sour beverage called kefir. And I've, I really like it. I'm going to see, this is actually the first batch that I've actually made right now. I'm kind of reviving the kefir grains from the people that send it over to me. Cause I just bought the grains and you got to stir vigorously from from what I read on the paper that, that came with the uh, kefir grains. So I'm stirring vigorously. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'll see where this goes and then I'll let you guys know more as it develops. But yes, guys, um, that's what's been happening. Uh, hopefully you guys realize that again, the whole carnivore thing is not religion, it's not dogma. This is very poor lighting. Let me change this over here. Haha, -ha. there you go. So just wanted to let you guys know where everything was. And again, I've been super, super busy, but I've been, uh, I've been really tight on time. So um, just letting you know, guys, I haven't forgotten about you and I'll be making videos each week and I'll be bringing you the Tokyo content. I know I've been telling you guys, but trust me, it's in the pipeline. It's in the works, believe me. But in any case, guys, thanks for joining me in another episode of Sage's Experience. Please go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. You guys know the deal. Push that notification bell if you haven't already done so. And slam that subscribe button. I know the subscribe number is going up, but I want to see people that are just as passionate about this stuff as I am, you know? It's not about, again, it's not about the carnivore diet. It's not about the vegetarian, the vegan diet. It's not about that. It's whatever's going to make us healthier. It's whatever's going to help us propel ourselves to live a longer life, a healthier life. And same goes to the people that are around us. How can we help those people by learning with maybe our mistakes, our trials, whatever you guys want to call them. That, that's what this channel is for. Is I'll, I'll go ahead and be the guinea pig for you guys. I'll try out whatever works for me. 
recommend some stuff and hopefully it works for you and if not um hopefully i have a list that's long enough where you can find something that ends up working for you but that is it for today guys i am starving this meat is starting to smell awesome and uh yeah my girlfriend's probably gonna kill me i'm the one that cooks around here so <laughs> zay out Peace.